before I begin, I want you to close your eyes and imagine this. It's 11 o'clock at night and you've had a few drinks with your mates. And you go to the end of the pub and your heart sings. You have to walk home alone. You want to lock your keys in your knuckles, slightly pull your clothes down so you don't attract attention to yourself. Have a recording ready on your phone, pretending to be a loved one calling you to scare off your potential attacker. Why do we have to do this? Because 71% of women have reported they have experienced sexual harassment in a public space. I am here to talk to you about the right to feel safe no matter where you are. What is the right to feel safe? It refers to the fundamental entitlement of every individual to live without fear, threat or danger. Everyone has a right to both physical and emotional safety. Since an early age we've been told to cover our bodies so that we don't draw attention to ourselves. We've been educated to hide away who we are to avoid oppression and disparagement, when it really should educate the ignorant to be more respectful. Why should we change when they don't? Women have reported in the survey stating they avoid certain areas at certain times to prevent them being harassed. They were asked, what would you do if men disappeared for 24 hours? The answers were quite unsettling, requesting some of the most basic desires, like going for a run at night, wearing whatever they want without fear of being molested, or raped, going out drinking with friends without guarding each other's drinks. The older generation phrase, she's asking for it, may not be said aloud today, but does that mean people don't still think it? The logic of others is if a girl wears a skirt slightly above the knee or a lower cut top, they're asking for sexual slander or in even more serious occasions, abuse. You walk home after school and you notice a boy training 50 feet behind you. Turning down your music that was once blasting in your ear, now just the deafening silence of the outside world. You replay what every mother's horror of having to tell their daughter how to protect herself in your head. Three turns down three different paths avoiding alleyways and quiet roads. Deep breaths, you're nearly home. The 50 feet quickly turn to 40, 30, 20, 10 feet. Take a breath, you'll be okay. Walk to a more populated area in town, getting closer and closer. You speed up your pace, but do not run. They will chase you. Go into a shop, walk up to the cashier, and hold your hand up, holding four fingers and track your thumb. And if all else fails, don't scream for help. Scream fire. In some unfortunate cases, methods like this aren't successful. In 2021, during COVID, there was a young woman living in Brixton Hill. She was coming back from a friend's house after a night in. On her journey home, she was stopped by a policeman who told her she was under arrest. Eleven days after, her body was found, but no life. Her name? Sarah Everard, an innocent young woman whose life was cruelly taken from her. Wayne Cousins, a former special constable, was her attacker. It wasn't the first time he attempted to attack young women and girls. This dated back to 1995, when he att attempted to kidnap a woman at knife point. Since then, Eight other reports were filed against him before Sarah's death. And just a week before her death, a McDonald's worker filed reports against him multiple times for indecent exposure. These reports were never acknowledged by the police. Let us not forget about the oppression men have faced. Men have been categorised as toxic stereotypes, being told to man up and boys can't cry. They are three times as likely to report sexual abuse than a female. Overall, 25% of men have said they have experienced sexual harassment and abuse. There could be more, but due to these standards and unwritten laws they are forced to follow, they can't find help, support and a voice. It's our generation that can make a change, a plan of action for a better, brighter future where men and women are in a society where they feel safe begins with us. Fight for a voice, have schools educate people more on the consequences of sexual harassment and abuse. Diminish the idea of boys will be boys and boys can't show emotion. And promote better support networks for people who have been exposed to this, allowing for them feeling less petrified of speaking up and asking for help. I hope in many years to come I'll bring a daughter or son into this world when they aren't subjected to this way of living. I raise my voice up, not so that I can shout, but those without a voice can be heard. Thank you.